Everybody, welcome to Ask Dr. Testosterone, starring Dr. George Tullianos, and brought to you by his huge book, The Bible of Bodybuilding 2, over 700 pages full of everything you need to know about training, nutrition, supplementation, and PED use. That is available on Amazon.com. If you're on Amazon.com buying books, get Real Bodybuilding. What a great book by Ron Harris. So now, all the way from Athens, Greece, please welcome the good Dr. George Tullianos. What's up, doctor? Hello, Ron. Have a good month. Yeah. So let's move on with 226. Is that 226? 28. Yeah. 28. Yeah. 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 You've done so many shows, you can't even keep track anymore. But good Lord. Imagine we'll get to 500 eventually one day. Yeah. So at the rate we're going. I told you you're including my biography. The book is over and will be released in September in Greece. But I hope by next year we're going to translate it. Oh, in okay. English. Right on. All right, well, let's get to some questions. We got a lot. Like I said, summertime is when we seem to get a lot of questions. 62-year-old male on 200 milligrams weekly testosterone and 100 milligrams weekly nandrolone prescribed nandrolone six-month cycle. Total testosterone blood work at six days, 580. At 14 days, 91. Do men of this age process it less efficiently? Been on TRT three years, blood work full panel done every 90 days. All other levels in range. Test levels steadily lowering on the same dosage. That's weird. Well, are you using the ground stuff? Well, it says the DECA is pres prescribed. No, I'm about the testosterone. I imagine it's prescribed. So when he does his test at, oh, well, here's a clue, though. At six days, it's 580. If what do you mean six days after the shot? Yeah. So what do, How much says, is he injecting? 200 milligrams a week. So this doesn't and make sense. And he has levels up? He says that this doesn't make sense because he's supposedly doing a shot of test a week, 200 milligrams. So he says at six days, 580, at 14 days, well, come 91. Come on, 580 at six days at 200 milligrams? Mm. He's under dose for sure. Mm. Or she's okay. injecting oil. I bet it is underground stuff. With okay. 200 milligrams at six days, you're supposed to have a thousand. Yeah. But what I don't understand is he says at 14 days, 91, but if he's doing a shot every week, 14, now, days, 14 days means that two weeks after. But we don't measure two weeks after. This is only if you use the needle. Yeah, true. I mean, this is wrong philosophy. Wrong yeah. perception, totally. Yeah. I mean, I wonder, sir, if, I'm going to speak directly to you, sir. If you're working, if these are prescribed and you're working with a doctor, see what's going on because maybe... I assume this gentleman is uh, self-medicating. Yeah, probably. And, and this, could be, this could be just a cycle, you know. This is not official DRT because... Intuitive will follow optimization, specific mm -hmm. timing of the injection, specific doses, and of course, legitimate stuff. So we have something accurate that we can speak of. Okay, fair enough. Next one's kind of similar. Hey guys, I'm 48 years old on TRT, 200 milligrams Sustanon every week, 25 milligrams Proviron daily, 500 milligrams HCG weekly, plus a fistful of vitamins every day. My question is in regards to sterility. My wife and I don't use contraception. I pull out, but I would love not to. We already have two beautiful children, and we don't want any more. Given my TRT protocol, what are the chances of me being sterile, or do I still need to be careful? Then why are you using HEG? You're going to fertilize with HEG like myself, like everybody. Come on. I mean, if you are against abortions, you should be anyway. Uh, take off the HEG, and preferably to have a uh, shrink. Uh, you know, smaller testicles, otherwise. Yeah. Uh, this favors your fertility, the HG. Yeah, and I mean, 200 milligrams of test a week, do you think most men could get a woman pregnant? In the no? long run, yes, you will uh, shrink uh, the, the volume of the testicle because it's the homeostasis, the balance. Mm. Yeah. In the long yeah. run, yes. Yeah, I mean, the pullout, so you know what it's called? Why are you using HG besides? I mean, this it's is ball. fertility. I mean, I there are some know. other benefits, but quit it to save some money if you don't want any other children. Come on. You think, You're asking for trouble otherwise. I think a lot of guys use HCG just to keep their balls big. I really think that's the only reason they use yeah, it. Yeah, but they don't come inside. Yeah, true. You know what that's called in porn? What's that called? You know? No, but I mean, your cum shot will be much bigger. <laughs> Listen, Ron. So if you come inside, you don't want to enjoy this. So if you want to have it, a large volume of, yeah. of uh, semen, yeah. then do it outside, of course. Well, you want to be on the HCG. But do you know what it's called in 
in pornographic movies or you know videos or whatever you know what it's called when the guy comes inside they call it a cream pie <laughs> listen ever, uh, ever tomorrow, i mean last week i had a four star in my office he so wanted to blue the pill and he said they're giving him a, a pill is called cobra which cobra. is supposed to give you massive erections oh. of course it's about the blood flow but this guy is injecting 500 grams a week four provider in a day Okay, yeah. plus a, this uh, certain blood, he films once a month and he's supposed non stop one hour. Non -stop. Mm. So, this stuff, Cobra, it, it's like a Cialis or a Viagra, it's a Vaseline. Yeah, but I think it's underground stuff with other things that it avoids you to primitive ejaculate. Okay, so I was gonna say, yeah, why is there a need for underground uh, ED drug? Because I think Cialis and Viagra, I don't know, because I, I mean, I, I guess it's enhanced. They put inside perhaps salinophil, uh, tadanophil together, you know. And have you heard about, um, I don't know the name, but uh, it's something also that delays ejaculation. Wow. So he only films once a month? Kamagra, something like this, Kamagra, something like this. He only films one scene a month? No. Oh, I thought you said Two he only a week. Two vials a week. No, no. How many, how, he only works. Yeah, he, only he films makes... once a month only. Uh -huh. Uh, but he's supposed to do nonstop uh, intercourse for one hour, and actually the filming takes place for ten hours Oof, because get... you you know cut cut cut. And yeah, you one hour of footage. Wow! So he's got to start stop start stop for ten hours. Oh. But he told me that his personal best was nonstop one hour. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's a long time. Try that sometime, guys. Okay, let's get back to steroids and stuff like that. Is there a way to time DHT cream? to spike my free testosterone for my workouts. Well, yeah, but listen, DHT itself has no anabolic effect, but it can spike your free testosterone so that you can take advantage of this, perhaps in terms of strength and also sex drive. Okay. Um, but, you know, preferably use the DHT sometime before your sex. Okay. Uh, okay. If, if, I mean, if you inject testosterone suspension before your workout or testosterone propionate the day before your workout, uh, free testosterone will spike also. Yeah. What because about DHT you... and testosterone do the same thing, they suppress HBG. So you have the same result even with DHT or uh, spike your testosterone by injecting. We've talked before about how uh, a lot of guys do. They're oral. If they're going to take D-ball or Winstrol or whatever, they'll take it before the workout, like 30 minutes before the workout. Yeah, I mean, it's obliquely because it goes into the bloodstream and you have this anabolic effect. But uh, anabolics have anabolic effect. I mean, testosterone is androgenic. Mm. Okay, it has anabolic effect, but anabolics are purely anabolic and less androgenic. Okay, so right. you care about the anabolic drive, you know, the, the protein synthesis. Okay, gotcha. All right. It's just next guy says I was reading that DECA can negate any BPH, which is benign prostate hypertrophy issues, from test by binding to the androgen receptors in the prostate. So is DECA good for avoiding BPH? Yes, actually, Connor mentioned that uh, six years ago in anabolics that natural is metabolized to the hydronatolone, which is less androgenic than the hydrotestosterone. Besides, nandrolone is less and it's a low androgenic drug that women can also use off season in low dose. And also, DECA is not good to bind tightly with CBT. So, DECA does not improve the sex drive, like, for instance, testosterone, DHT, or halotestin, or the DHT derivatives that can crash the CBT and liberate sky high the free testosterone. So, DECA does not bind well with SHBG. So, you don't expect the free testosterone to go super high. But yet, the flip side of the coin is that it doesn't irritate that much the prostate. Mm, yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, I think most guys over the age of 50 have some prostate growth anyway, don't? No? That's why it's called benign. Yeah, I mean, for, you can estimate this even with the digital earth examination and with the ultrasound. Yeah. Okay. I haven't had one of those in a few years now. All right, here we go. I'm on 160 milligrams of Sipionate a week, 80 milligrams twice a week. And here we go again, 500 IU of HCG. I just had my blood work and my total test is 1,197. 
Free test is 298. SHBG is 25. And estradiol is 88. I'm having water retention and brain fog and wondering if I should take an aromatase inhibitor or should I lower my dose instead? Do you think my estradiol is too high at 88? Listen, I mean, I guess, I mean, he has almost 1,200 total testosterone, right? Huh? Yeah, yeah, almost. Yeah, now 1,200 is over the range. 80 is also over the range, but it's yet it's proportional. Okay. Uh, 80 is not really digital. It's not over 100, for instance. Now, this water retention could, it's also from the aldosterone that testosterone kicks, but also, it's also a sign of aromatization and, uh, you know, edema, but not yet gynecomast if you don't have symptoms. So, um, either he can lower the dose 150 into dose of 75. I think he's injecting 180, 160, how much? Uh, so, he's doing 80 twice a week to give him a total of 160 for the week. Okay. Go 75 twice a week, or you can go three do uh, three doses of 50, even better. Yeah, cool. Okay? Yeah. And in order to avoid the AI. What's this brain? I've never heard of brain, you know, brain fog. Brain I've fog, never... usually we have, when we have low testosterone, you know, this confusion. Yeah. We don't have clear thoughts. We cannot concentrate. We don't have cognitive function. I wonder why but is he it's having... Very it? high estrogens, I guess. Wow. I remember myself when I was using two grams of testosterone. Yeah. It was all blurry here, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean uh, a lot of that. That's a a big problem with a lot of people that they had COVID and they're fine, but they have like brain fog for the rest of their lives. It seems like these long long COVID problems. All right, enough about COVID. Next one. My prolactin is higher than normal ranges, and it gives me penile insensitivity. Oh no. Is there any natural supplements that can help? I tried cabergoline and had too many side effects. Penile insensitivity. That sucks, dude. I'm sorry. <laughs> Penile insensitivity. Sounds like you're using uh, lidocaine that it's anesthetic, local anesthetic. Mm. And uh, penile insensitivity. I mean, uh, you blame it on his way, he thinks it's from his prolactin levels being too high. How much is prolactin? And what were the side effects of cobergly? Don't know. No, unknown, Captain. Unknown. You also have bromocryptin, which is parallel, and another drug. But how much prolactin? I mean, if it's 15, it's all, it's all right. If it's 20, it's no big deal. You can use one milligram per week. Yeah. Please let me know how much is it. And the other alternative is the uh, parallel, which is bromocryptin. Okay. okay. Next one's a simple question. Can I get away with Monday, Wednesday, Friday injection schedule with testosterone propionate? Also, you mentioned you take one milligram anastrozole per week. Do you dose it just one time a week? I take anastrozole whenever I feel to. Sometimes I watch my nipples and they're, they're a little bit pointing out, okay? I don't like how it looks like sometimes. Yeah. Uh, and I check out tomorrow actually I'm going to do blood work. And when I don't take an aromatase inhibitor, my A, my my estradiol goes 80, 90, even though I'm injecting 100 milligrams. Now, uh, I'm bored of cutting down the arimidex, so I take one per week along with my injection. Now I'm using 100 milligrams every Monday because, as I told you, because of my parents' history of the cancer, I'm injecting every day almost two or three years of glutathione. And I save my delts and my butt also for daily injection of glutathione. So I switch my TRT protocol to once a week of N of 8, 100 milligrams. I know it's not the ideal, but I want to do the detox and the anti-aging therapy with glutathione every day plus the NAC and a plethora of, of um, and the uh, oxidants. Uh, but uh, usually I'm using one milligram, but I have to tell you, uh, two days after my joints ache, especially my elbows mm -hmm. and my shoulders. Wow. So if I want a water retention because of the estrogens without an AI, then I notice sometimes that it points out my nipple. Mm -hmm. Not as a giant, you know, but right. you can feel it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you can have it both. We know that before a show, we need to be super dry. Some some people are asking me, Doc, do you have gyno? And I'm asking them, we love 
estrogens. We will not like in a run, in a runaway show. We're not on a stage that we have to be sucked up here, okay? Because TRT is something different. If you're super dry by AIs, you're not healthy. So yes, it may look vagina to somebody who thinks I'm a bodybuilder on stage, but I'm not. Mm. And I'm not going in this route to suck my estrogens in order to look dry or my nipples to be sucked, no? And plus this is not healthy. It's gonna hurt your it's gonna crash your HDL level too, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Also, yeah. yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Next one is. I'd like to know if there's a minimum safe dose of GH regarding bone structure, facial changes, hepatomegalia, heart enlargement. Oh, hepatomegalia would be uh, your liver, right? Yeah, liver enlargement. So these things. Uh, hold on. Let me, uh, let me, he's got more. He says, I'm 50 years old. I'm taking one to two IU daily for anti-aging and fat loss. Would that accumulate for the next five years and see changes like belly, gut, or organ enlargement? I don't think so. Those manifestations deal with organomegaly that uh, happen, occur when you super spike your age of one long period of time of, let's say, eight IUs. You know, to have bone structure and uh, a large jawline and the prominent forehead and the zygomatic bones and the elbows. Hmm. Uh, and certainly not the IG aging uh, doses that he's using, you know. Yeah. You remember there was a guy years ago. Nobody knew who he really was, called GH15. And he said the minimum dose for bodybuilders should be 15 IUs a day for GH. Whew, it's a lot of money. <laughs> I remember some guys that were competing on super, super heavy weight with uh, a Henry and the umbilicus, a large bubble guy, and an other doll jawline. Do you, you remember this, the, the head size of Greg Collins? His head was like a bucket. He was 400 pounds of season and he was 350 on stage. I, I saw him. I saw him up close. Man. 26 arms him. here. Rips. Off season, you know, you, you he know, was he, fat at 400. No, I'm saying I bet it was, you know, I my waist is not small, but I bet he had a 60 inch waist. It was huge. It was like this big around and big belly. Had to be 60 inches. I I would bet money. He was it. enormous. I mean, Jake oh, Adler was huge. Was yeah. He looked great in the gym, but put him on stage in the trunks. And it was like, oh, he was like he won the nationals. He was super good in the nationals. Yeah, he won the Canadian. He won some Canadian show in term pro. And he did, I think Chad did Chad prep him? He did the Arnold Classic one year. He was in the Arnold Classic. He was, of course, last place. And he looked, oh, it was a horrible body. Horrible. Because it's, you know, he just didn't have the right kind of structure. It wasn't pretty for bodybuilding. You know, sizes. Size is one thing, but let's get to our last question. Trenbolone cough. One person wants to know what medicine works to reduce trenbolone cough. Is there anything you can take so you don't get... Yeah, salbutamol, beta to inhaler, which is technically used for asthma, so you bromodilate. Called what? Uh, salbutamol. It's oh, a... Oh, okay, like albuterol or clenbuterol. Yeah, yeah, but it happens in spray with, that goes directly to the receptors of the trachea and the bronchi. Okay. And you bromodilate. It works much better than clenbuterol, actually. So you do that right before the trend, before you shoot your trend? No. Uh, yeah, huh? yeah, exactly, to avoid the coughing you know, or to relieve the cough. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. you're choking severely, you know, asphyxia. I've had it. I felt like I'm going to cough up a lung. Can't stop no, coughing. You cough like an idiot, you know, for five <laughs> minutes nonstop. You can spit blood. Yeah. I remember the first time it happened to me, my wife was in the next room, and she comes running in, she goes, what the hell's wrong? Are you okay? What, what's wrong with you? And she saw I had just done a shot. And she's like, what the hell did you just put in yourself? I said, it's called Trend. It's this new drug. It's awesome. I remember yeah. I was breathing in front of the ventilator 10 years ago in my basement. And frankly, I think I was not going to make it. Mm. I was so embarrassed to my mother and my sister because they could find me, you know, uh, unconscious with, with injection in my butt. Come on, God, it was a nightmare. Well, what a way to go. Yeah. Not as bad as Elvis, who died on the toilet, but still, that's pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Elvis. Anyway, that's all the questions we have for this week. Guys, join us here next week again. If you have questions, comments, anything, leave them in the comments below. That's where we gather our questions for the next show is in the comments section. But we love all kinds of feedback. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, share the video, turn on notifications on YouTube and on your phone. And of course, Thank you, Dr. Tuliados, for being here for the people all around the world who 
need this advice badly from a doctor who actually understands PED use and everything that goes along with it. We're very, very fortunate to have you. So thank you very much, sir. All right. And that will do it for this week's episode of Ask Dr. Testosterone. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Hey, did you like that video? Smash that like button, subscribe to MD, and please comment down below. Thanks for watching.